keeping up, guys? You always, always got to call on you when you're here. Amen. Been able to spend a little time with them this last week and uh, hear some of the great things that they're involved in and what God's doing and, and uh, how he's moving in Harvest City. Did you all hear that? He said, I'm more wordy than him. So being a Minnesotan, I may prove him wrong right now <laughs> and give him the mic. Welcome to you. It's always a blessing to be here. We are so grateful for this church family, Pastor Ron and Pastor Annette. I've always welcomed us and been such a gracious blessing to us and each and every one of you. There's a little boy with a cowboy hat last week who, who came in turned around, looked at me with this big, beautiful smile like he knew me. And I thought, man, now that's God's expression right through a little boy. And so I just wanted to encourage you all, your children, you've got such a beautiful church here of people, even from your children up. That's what a blessing, and that's a reflection. So we're grateful to be here in Las Vegas. There's a lot of things going on, and Pastor John will tell you. Well, we're just... Um thankful to be here and I always always enjoy coming back here because in my opinion I think Rod is probably the best example I see of a New Testament pastor anywhere so I really really mean that so you guys are so fortunate to have someone like this and um, you know I, I seen something this morning that that just really moved me and that was um you know if you think about it life on this earth is the briefest thing we'll ever do and, um, and, you know, rather than, I know we just took up the offering, but maybe rather than just throw our money in the offering bucket, we should throw our lives in the offering bucket, too, and go wherever God calls us to go, you know. And so um, the Lord is good, isn't he? Praise God. So I don't know. Got much else. <laughs> Let's thank him once again for being with us. Thank you, guys. Bless you. Love you, too. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 4. So we've been running down this road for a while. Uh, last Sunday after uh, we administered, I had asked you all to, uh, if you were led that day, to pray for your pastor because I was ministering at another church that evening. It was really awesome to be a part of uh, the church service over there at the Rock Church in Bloomington uh, doing a fabulous, fabulous job out there. And I talked to Pastor Jeff Warner as he was out in Sturgis last week, and uh, he said, man, the harvest was definitely ripe unto harvest, and he did a lot of harvesting out there, just preached out of the back of his pickup truck right in the middle of a parking lot full of Harley Davidsons and, and riders, so it's pretty cool to uh, be connected with those that are bringing in the harvest, praise God, amen? Ephesians chapter 4, uh, starting with verse 11, it says, and he, that's talking about Jesus, gave some to be apostles, some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. You know, when we get up on a Sunday morning or we come to church on a Wednesday evening, we should get up and pray and say, thank you, Lord, I'm going to be equipped today. You know, please don't just come to church to listen to what I have to say. Come with an open heart to receive not just the words that I'm speaking, but the Spirit, the Holy Spirit behind the word that we teach. Do you understand what I'm saying? You know, because I can only give you so much, but God wants to give you everything he has for you. Amen? And that, that needs to be a heart. That needs to be our uh, attention in our mind to say, you know what, Lord, I'm not just going to attend, but I'm going to get something. Not just for myself, but I'm going to get something so that I can make what you're doing on this earth more complete by the gifts that you've invested in me. Amen. And that is the purpose, that is the sole purpose for the what is called the ministry gifts, the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Notice it said he gave some of each of those gifts. So there, there, there's a, a variety because God wants to, to speak to us in different, different ways. 
so that we can get the fullness of what he has for us. That's why when we have, you know, uh, ministries that come into our church, I mean, they're, they're different gifts. They're different callings on their lives to help deposit something that you might not get in on a service every Sunday just listening to your pastor because I'm gifted different than some of them. And that, that's okay. We're not in competition with one another. The pastor's gift is not in competition with the apostle or prophet. No, we're, we're in this for bringing our part, so not, not to compete, but to complete one another. And then with that, under the, the leadership in the body of Christ, under those ministry gifts, they're each, uh, every one of us, and I'm part of you too, each of us has something that God has deposited within us to make the body of Christ more whole than it is without us. I'm just going to say it this way, as far as God is concerned, you're a big deal. <laughs> Every one of you is a big deal because you're a part of the whole. Amen. There, there, there's, some, there, there's some parts of an engine that that engine would not do good without Correct, Don? <laughs> there may be something, you know, something that's shrouding the, the muffler or something, you know, so you don't burn your, you know, you can do without that for a while, but there's some things within the internal parts of that engine that you better not leave out. Bearings are important, aren't they? Pistons? Yeah. So God doesn't want any parts of his body left out. Amen. Say this, say, God has deposited within me by his good pleasure gifts, callings, anointings, and talents that are his. Amen. And he wants to use each and every one of us in the arena in which we live. Praise God. For the equipping of the saints, for the work of the ministry, and for the edifying of the body of Christ, verse 13, till we all come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to the perfect man, to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro, carried about with every wind of doctrine, by the trickery of men and the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ, from whom the whole body joined and knit together by what every joint supplies according to the effect of working by which every part does its share causes growth of the body for the edifying of itself in love. Yesterday at prayer, we were just talking about some things as we do, and, and the discussion was wonderful. And, and, you know, this kind of popped out of my, in, into my heart and out of my mouth that, you know what, we are... We need to be growth causers. <laughs> I don't know if that's a proper English, but it doesn't matter because it communicates. We're growth causers. We are to cause growth in the body of Christ. We're not to just exist and put in our time. But there's a high purpose, a high plan that God has for each and every one of us. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, it says this, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Behold, you know that word behold? Translated, literally means Wow. It means this is a really big deal. You know, sometimes we commit scriptures to our memory or, or, or we speak of them so much that sometimes we lose the power and the impact of what that scripture is saying because we've become so familiar with it. Don't ever become too familiar with John 3.16. I mean, for God so loved, he gave. That's a huge deal. It's a huge deal that you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, this is a big deal. All things have become brand new. 
Hallelujah. Now that they become brand new, now what? Now what? What is the purpose for all things to become brand new? And up? Behold. I want you to pay attention is what it's saying. This is a really big deal. All things have become new. Why have they become new? The next verse tells us. It gives us the purpose of why we become a new creation in Christ Jesus. Verse 18 says this, Now all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself through Christ Jesus and has given us the ministry of reconciliation. We are not saved to miss hell. We are saved, we're born into his kingdom to make sure that as few people as possible miss hell. By God making all things new in our lives and then calling us into the ministry of reconciliation. Making what's wrong right. Sharing the good news with somebody that's messed up. That's why he's made us brand new. He's saying this is a big deal. I've made you new, but I've made you new for a purpose, and this is the purpose. I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. But all things are from God who through Jesus Christ <coughs> reconciled us to himself, received us into favor, and brought us into harmony with himself, and gave to us the ministry of reconciliation. It sounds pretty similar to his ministry. that by word and deed we might aim to bring others into harmony with him. It was God personally present in Christ, reconciling and restoring the world to favor with himself, not counting up and holding against them, men, their trespasses, but canceling them and committing to us the message of reconciliation, of restoration to favor. So we are Christ's ambassadors. Say, I am, I am. Christ's ambassador. Christ and it says, God making his appeal as it were through us. We as Christ's personal representatives, think of that. We are Christ's personal representatives. He does not have a plan B. You're it, honey. If you're ever wondering what the plan of God looks like, go to the bathroom and look in the mirror. You're it. You're it. That's what God's plan looks like. And what is that plan? He's called you as a minister of reconciliation. Amen. Amen. personal representative, beg you for the, his sake to lay hold of the divine favor now offered you and be reconciled to God. For our sake, we made Christ virtually to be, he made Christ virtually to be sin who knew no sin, so that in and through him we might become and endued with viewed as being in the examples of the righteousness of God. That's a big deal. Behold, this is why you're new, to be an example of the righteousness of God. We ought to be approved, acceptable, and in right standing with him by his goodness. Glory to God. Of course, what is the ministry of reconciliation? Jesus spelled it out with the Great Commission. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. It's not complicated. Well, God's not called me to be a preacher. You're a liar. Because Jesus commanded those that followed him to go out and preach the gospel to every creature. Amen. Now, the way you do it and the way the person next to you does it, or the way I do it, may look a whole lot different from one another, but the point being is this, is that we're to preach the gospel. We're to share some way, somehow, that God has done something in our life. 
And hopefully your lifestyle would be the open door for people to ask you questions why you're so different and not mean it as a bad thing. You know, when things are just kind of falling apart everywhere and they know some of the stuff that's going on in your life and you're walking in the peace of God, they say, man, I know what you're going through. I mean, there's a, but what, what is it about you? There just seems to be so much peace. And you say, oh, I'm glad you asked. I know the Prince of Peace. And the Prince of Peace is my source for peace. Amen. Just simple. I mean, and, and, and just share your heart. Share what God has done for you. Oh, boy. <clears throat> I don't know if I've said it before. <laughs> Help me out. Prince of Peace. Help me out. It's recorded. <laughs> that was for the moment. Then I, I can't. I, I... That's great. That's what you got to be. Like, Amen. What you're doing, you're right <laughs> My face red now? The sun is shining in here. <laughs> we'll get a recording for you. <laughs> if it comes to me, I'll share it with you again. <clears throat> no, it just came out. The New Living Testament said that we're to preach the good news to everyone, everywhere. Everyone, everywhere. Amen. Amen. You know, in, 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 in this day and age, <clears throat> there are so many ways and levels that we can communicate by. You know, and oftentimes, you know, we might even try to, you know, I mean, there's some things that I've even kind of come up, you know, and it's not all good, but let's not make the ungood about it useless. And just this morning, there's someone from our family, there, you know, Someone in the family, that uh, extended family, going through some things. And you know what? I, I just shared some scripture with them. Don't know if they're a believer. You know? And I just said, you know, hey, Jesus' stripes are so and so's healing stripes. And the peace of God. I pray that the peace of God is protecting your heart and your mind for your concern for so and so. Just, just do that all. Don't just use it for political whatever you got on your mind politically. But use it for good. Don't let the devil steal it from you. Amen. Then I put the scripture references so that if they want to so choose to pick up their Bible and look at it, maybe they'll stumble onto a few more scriptures. That's preaching the gospel. Preach the good news. You know, isn't it good news that if someone's not doing well, that there is a source called the stripes of Jesus that have been placed upon his back, upon his body, that, 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 that bought their healing? Share the good news. That's good news. Isn't it a wonderful thing to know that, that there's a source that comes from heaven itself, that when all hell is breaking out around you, that you can walk through it in peace? The peace of God that surpasses all understanding, guarding your heart and guarding your mind in Christ Jesus. See, don't, don't, don't make it so complex or complicated. Just share. You know, remember back years ago, uh, oh golly, what's his name? The Crystal Cathedral. Robert Schuler. you know, I mean, he'd just end, the, he'd end every broadcast. God loves you, and so do I. Well, there may not be a scripture for verse there, but it's, it's backed by the scripture. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. And we in the body of Christ, we are to love one another. God loves you, and so do I. You know, hey, you, you and God got this. God is backing you. That is scripture and verse, no, but you know what? It's the truth. And it's the truth that makes 
you're free. So preach the good news to everyone everywhere. Matthew 28, 19, go therefore and make disciples of all nations. Well, that doesn't mean that you're going to go make disciples of the country itself, but nations just simply means groups of people. Groups of people. Go make disciples of everybody. Amen? The greatest joy and the greatest reward in life is to lead someone to the well of the living water to receive Jesus Christ as Lord. Of all the amazing things that the Lord has allowed us to be a part of, there's just something about being empowered from on high with the Holy Ghost, with the power to witness, to share the gospel with somebody and for them to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Man. Man. I mean, that, 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 that's more exciting than waiting for your new snowmobile or, or, or you know, motorcycle or whatever. I mean, there, how do you put a price on that? To share the good news with somebody that is just absolutely busted up. Life has been cruel to them. Some of it probably due to decisions they made, but you know what? God doesn't look at the decisions you've made as long after you've made a decision for Christ. Behold, all things become new. They become so new that no matter how broken you are, he's entrusted the power of the Holy Spirit inside of you to be a minister of reconciliation. And he'll use your busted up, tangled up, crashed up life and your story to bring people into the kingdom of God. Because you'll have a look and see what the Lord has done story. Hallelujah. Woo! Yes, <laughs> That's what life is all about. Hallelujah. The truest and most valuable prize on this planet are people. And your investment into those people. Amen. You know, I, I'm not just a hoping and a praying that some days my, my, my kids or my grandkids get into the kingdom of God. No, they're, 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 I, uh -uh. they're, they're hearing the gospel right now. I mean... Kiva gets preached to all the time. Can't wait to get down to see the other three. <laughs> Our boys realize that, you know what, their mom and dad are speaking the word over them and they're praying for them. I told Reagan last night, I said, you know what, we're not waiting until you get on the battlefield for us to pray God's protection for you. We thank God right now and we've been praying for months, years, since you've put your nine name on that dotted line to serve this nation. That your steps are ordered to the Lord. That he's given his angels charge over you in your training and on the field. I mean, let's, let's be on the offense. The church should never be a step behind, but too often we are. Because we're just, we're just adjusting our prayer to what's happened instead of adjusting what's about to happen with our prayer. Sure, we pray after certain you know, things come up, of course, but what if we would have prayed against what came up? I mean, obviously in this earth today, you don't have to look too far where, where, where you know, evil is abounding. But guess what? It can't outdo grace. God will never be outdone. Got a question for you. Serious question. Now, what are you believing God for? What are you believing God for? Let me say it this way. Who 
are you believing God for? I mean, we've, we've, we've been so overcome with the what that we've forgot to be believing God for the who. Who are you believing God for? And you know what the thing is, is when, when, when you've got someone on your heart, realize this, that God will not give up on them, so he'll give you the power not to give up on them. And he'll give you precision, wisdom, in how to penetrate those hearts that you're believing him for. It may be someone that just has slipped away. They were on fire for God one day, and now they're not anymore. Don't, <clears throat> don't give up on them. Don't give up on them. God, in partnership with you, will get them back if you believe them for it. And I realize that their will is involved, but, you know, God's got a way of, you know, surgically getting, you know, microscopic surgery <laughs> into the, the, the parts of a heart that don't seem to ever be able to be ben, pen, penetrated. God's got a way to get to them. And sometimes you're the surgical tool that he's going to use to get in there. Believe God for it. Believe God for it. I don't care how lost somebody is or how backslid somebody is. God's got a way. But he needs cooperation. You become a new creation. Why? To be a minister of reconciliation. You're an ambassador of Christ. Where are you applying your faith? The Bible says here in uh, Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all things, and all these things, well, if you look further up in the chapter before this, it tells you, I mean, basically anything that you have need of in the natural is what he's saying here. But if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, all these things shall be added unto you. So my question is this, if you seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things are going to be added unto you, then why waste your faith on those things? Just a question, just a thought. Seek first and all these things will be added. When you direct your faith and effort to his kingdom, Everything else falls into place. Direct your faith to the eternal well-being of others. And the natural side of your life will be taken care of. Now, I'm hearing some pretty cool stories from, from you guys, just the, the different episodes that God is just arranging for you to come in contact with someone, or some, a lot of times it's just someone going out of the way to come in contact with you. You know, sometimes you think back, you know, you just kind of, dear God, how, what was that all about, and how did you arrange that, Lord? According to your faith, be it unto you. I want to be in the right place at the right time with a word to speak in somebody's due season. Just as there have been so many other people that have been at the right place at the right time with a word for my season. If God did it for me, he's not a respecter of persons. I'm going to believe God that he'll do for others what he's done for me. That's where my faith is at. I'm believing that, that people will just be standing between a, a, a men's restroom and a drinking fountain and someone walks up to him and says, young man, you need Jesus. And they're so taken back like I was, but how do you get them? Believe God. Apply your faith for opportune times. To be the hands and the feet with the message of Jesus. Praise God. Tell you, you tell, I tell you what, you, you, you apply your faith. There's nothing nearer and dearer to God's heart 
than someone coming out of the kingdom of darkness into the light of his dear son. That, that, that's, you know, I mean, he'll take care of us, you know, make sure that we're driving nice vehicles and so on and so forth. But really, that's not, that's not very close to God's heart. That's just the benefit of obedience. Not even obe uh, obedient love. Make us be where somebody needs us to be, Father, in their due season. Because the Bible says this, and because it says it, it means that it's eternal. So when it was written, it means it's still for today. And does it not say that today is the day of salvation? I mean, did God ever take a day off of, you know, bringing people into the kingdom of God? No, today is the day of salvation. Amen. The, today is a day of having someone become brand new in Christ. Behold. I mean, I want to live a wow life. <laughs> Don't you? Amen. I'm, I'm going to read Matthew 6. 33 and 34, out of the Amplified. <clears throat> it says this, But seek, aim at, and strive after. First of all, his kingdom and his righteousness, his way of doing and being right. And then all these things taken together will be given to you besides. So do not worry or be anxious about tomorrow. For tomorrow will have worries and anxieties of its own, sufficient for each day in its own trouble. But seek at, seek for, aim at, first of all, his kingdom. Today is the day of salvation, so really don't, don't, don't apply your worries to tomorrow. When you're seeking at, aiming at, and striving for his kingdom, you're going to run away from any worry, any anxiety. Amen. Matthew chapter 7. I hope I flip the page and it's the same page. <clears throat> Verse 7. Where are you applying your faith? What are you believing God for? Who are you believing God for? Ask, and it'll be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it'll be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receive, and he who seeks, find unto him who knocks, it shall be opened. So if the nearest and dearest thing to God's heart is your snaggletoothed, crabby, foul mouth aunt, not Mary, not Mary, where's Mary, is she here today? It's not Mary, just, just using this for an example, okay, Auntie Mary, I love you, she's made me make sure that she knows it, and you start applying your faith for either God to give you something to speak into their lives or to send a labor across their path. And if that's the nearest and dearest thing to God's heart, do you think he's going to overlook what you're asking for? Ask. Ask. Quit asking for stuff and start asking for people. Oh, dear me, I haven't heard. Man, I haven't thought of that guy since I graduated with him in high school. I wonder why you're thinking about him now. Maybe you're thinking about him or her for the purpose of asking the Father on their behalf for someone to come across their path. 
Amen. And I believe when we get there, I don't know what it's, you know, what we're going to see or not, but I would imagine maybe, you know, we would be able to see some of the people that prayed you and me in that we didn't even know. That'd be cool. You know, I mean, we, we've been led to the Lord by somebody, but you know what? There, there was a lot more effort put in to your salvation prior to you praying. That's why we've been given the Holy Ghost to pray in the Holy Spirit, pray in other tongues as the Spirit gives us utterance. We don't realize or who, what or who we're praying for. There may be people coming up to you saying, hey, thanks for praying. And it's like, what did I do? If God so chooses, he can show us the, the moment that we were on our knees, bawling out, didn't even know why we were bawling out. And that's crying our eyes out for someone. What is this all about, Lord? Well, God knew. Praise God. Ask. Ask, ask, ask. Luke chapter 19, verse 10, it said that Jesus said, For the Son of Man has come to seek. Seen, hearing that word seek today, right? Seek and to save that which was lost. Hallelujah. Now, this verse of Scripture has always been a tremendous blessing and a challenge to me. And we've shared it quite frequently, but John chapter 14, verse 12, Jesus speaking again, he said, most assuredly, I say to you. So do you think that what Jesus has to say to you, that it'd be truthful? Isn't he the way, the truth, and the life? Didn't he say that you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free? So let's listen to hear what Jesus has to say about you and me said, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me. How many of you believe in Jesus today? Raise your hand. Well, 75%. <laughs> uh, most assuredly, I say to you, he who believes in me. So if you believe in him, this is, this is Jesus speaking to you. The works that I do. He will do also, and greater works than these he will do, because I go to my Father. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And when he is saying in my name, he's saying if you ask anything according to my will, well, what's the will of God? Read the Bible. He's not hiding his will from you. It's been recorded. Well, Jesus came to seek and save the lost, didn't he? So there's one of those works that we're to do, and greater works than these shall we do. If he sought after the lost, guess what? That's part of our job description. We're ambassadors of Christ. Amen? We're ministers of reconciliation. Proverbs chapter 24, 11 said, Rescue those being led away to death. Hold back those staggering toward the slaughter. That's what we're called to do. Proverbs 11.30, he who wins souls is wise. The Amplified said, he who is wise captures human lives for God. As fishers of men, he gathers and receives them for eternity. We need to become more eternal-minded. We, we need to become more eternal-minded. I've used this illustration before. I mean, if there's someone that's near and dear to us and we attend their funeral, we should never have the thought, I wonder if they made it into heaven. That's a, that's a terrible thought. And I, I got to say, I, I've thought that my, to myself. I mean, it's like, man, I knew this person. I knew this person well, but I, I wonder if they made it. Whew. Why? Am I wondering? Because I didn't preach to them. 
I didn't get into a spiritual or eternal conversation with them. And that, that, that bears heavy on my heart. Now, maybe somebody else did. Hope to God somebody else did and they received. But man, we, we need to get to a point to where we need to know some things. And that's some of those things that we really need to know. Not just hope so. Or not just, you know, what? well, they're such a good person. Well, there's a lot of good people in hell. And a lot of scoundrels in heaven. But they're not scoundrels anymore because, behold, all things became brand new. But you know what I'm saying about that. I mean, judging by how they live their life, how in the world did they get here? They just simply believes. Someone preached Christ to them and they received. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 9. I'm going to read through Matthew 10, verse 1. It said, Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. Hmm. Didn't he say that these works that, you do, that I do shall you do also? So what's the first thing he did? He went about all cities and villages teaching. Teaching. Preaching the gospel of the kingdom and healing every sickness and every disease among the people. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the labors are few. Therefore, pray the Lord for, of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And when he had called his 12 disciples to him, he gave them power over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease. The, tr the harvest truly is plentiful. I, they're, 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 there are way too many people when they draw their last breath that they don't depart and be in his presence all around us. All around us. You don't have to go overseas to be an impactful minister for God. You can go to your next-door neighbor, can walk across the street. Amen. Bumped into someone at a, at a grocery store, bump into someone at a restaurant. And just, just allow yourself to be bumped into and ask God to have you bump into people. Apply your faith to that. God will take care of everything else. Seek first his kingdom. And when you're praying for harvests, harvesters, say, Lord, I believe that you've made me the best harvester there is. Not to compete with anybody, but to fulfill your call. Amen? You know what the sad truth is? Is this. That only one in ten believers have ever led someone else to saving faith in Jesus. I believe we're way beyond average here. I, I realize that, but... As a whole, the body of Christ, they're not sharing their faith. They may be living a good life, and they may be a good example, and a good example to be is wonderful, but it's only the door that opens up the opportunity to do what only you can do, and that's preach the gospel. I mean, our goal needs to be this, that, that you know what, Lord, I want to I wanna be about what I cannot do in heaven. I want to be about here on earth every single day. And you know what one thing you can never do in heaven? Lead someone to Jesus. You'll never, throughout all eternity when you're in heaven, you'll never have an opportunity 
to lead someone to Jesus Christ. So let's be about that business here on this earth. Because this life that we lead today is but a vapor compared to eternity. But when you get involved in someone's vapor of life, you'll get to see them throughout all eternity. Let's be eternal, not temporal-minded. Amen. That means that 90% of Christians keep their faith to themselves, which God never intended. I mean, I've even heard people say this. Well, that's a personal thing. Well, to a certain degree, but it's personal to, you know, share. Meaning personally mean it's yours to give to somebody. What God has given you, it's up to you, and it's your prerogative to give to somebody else. Amen. I mean, if someone came up to you and, and, and gave you a million dollars and you bumped into somebody, remember, you want to bump into people, and there's a dire need in their life, and God's just given you a supply to be a supply to somebody else. How much more valuable is the message of Christ than a million dollars to give to somebody? Praise God. But too much of the church is underground. They're secret and silent believers. And we were never intended to be that. Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach. That means herald the gospel, share the gospel. We are the salt of the world, but we need to get out of the salt shaker. It's time to enter into the harvest. The Bible says, look up and see. The fields are white unto harvest. They're white. Amen. It's harvest time right now. Today is the day of salvation. Right now, today. And when tomorrow turns into today, then tomorrow in its today is the day of salvation. Let us not be those silent believers. Let us be a Romans chapter 1, verse 16 believer. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes. I'm going to read a scripture that we refer to almost every single Sunday in Romans chapter 10. But I'm going to read around the verses that we usually quote so that we get the fullness of what the Word of God is saying here. In verse 8 it says in, in, in Romans chapter 10, but what does it say? The Word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith which we preach. That if you confess, now this is the good news that people need to hear. This is the good news that I heard in February of 1980. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the Scripture says, Whoever believes on him will not be put to shame, for there is no distinction between the Jew and the Greek, for the same Lord over all is rich to all who call upon him. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? Guess where you step in? You have an opportunity to share with them so they hear. <clears throat> how shall they hear in him or believe in him in whom they have not hear, heard? And how shall they hear 
without a preacher. Now, that doesn't mean that you got to call up Pastor Rod or Pastor Tom or Annette. Hey, there's someone here that needs to be witnessed to come on over. No, you're the preacher. You are the minister of reconciliation. You are the ambassador of Christ. God will give you a word to fitly speak in that moment. You don't have to take thought what you shall say. God, by the Holy Ghost, will give it to you, and you'll be amazed at what comes out your mouth and how God reveals something to somebody to open up their heart to the truth that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is, is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise God. You are that preacher. You are that preacher. And how shall they preach unless they are sent as it is written? How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Amen. Amen. I mean, we should be walking around and say, I got pretty feet, I got pretty feet. <laughs> I'm not going to start painting my toenails, though, but I mean, I'm... No, when you look down to your feet, you should say, thank you, Lord, for these beautiful feet. Some of you have to say that by faith, but like me, but, you know. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings of good things. But they have not all obeyed the gospel, for Isaiah says, Lord, who has believed our report? And I love it. It doesn't say who has believed our report, so let's just give up. No, verse 17. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How will they hear without a preacher? How will they develop a faith to receive Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior if they don't hear about him? And how will they hear without a preacher? How will they hear without a preacher? Say this out loud. Say, I'm that preacher, Lord. I'll be obedient, and you'll fill my mouth, and you'll open their hearts. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, you, you committed yourself to it. You just, you know, <laughs> you declared it, so it's so. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. We are those preachers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, Father, we thank you for your Word. We're grateful for the investment that you've made in our lives through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ and raising him from the dead and that we've got that same power that raised Christ from the dead dwelling within our mortal bodies, quickening them, making them well so that we can finish our course and finish that course with joy and help us finish our course with great expectation to bring as many people into the kingdom as possible. Father, I pray that every one of us are bumped into this week somehow. Or we bump up, bump into somebody. Glory to God. Father, there are many of us here today. We've got different ones in our lives that we're familiar with that our concern for them is not, is not a worry for them, but it's a, it's a concern that maybe they've not yet come into the kingdom of God, Lord. Either show us how to enter into that discussion with them or send them a laborer. But Lord, as we pray for laborers to be sent forth, we're volunteering as well. In Jesus' name. Before we close this morning, I just want to make sure that everyone here has had that opportunity. You've heard the gospel this morning. We've preached the gospel this morning. So once the gospel's been preached, once you've heard it, then it's your 
move towards God, that'll make a difference. Just because you've heard something good doesn't mean that something good is going to happen in your life. You need to do something with what you've heard. We're to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. So today, if there would be anybody here within the sound of my voice, either here in the sanctuary or online, <clears throat> man, make sure that before you leave here or before you turn your computer off, that you receive this opportunity that, that the Spirit of God is giving to you right now through the Word of God. I'll just simply quote it again. We, we quoted part of it earlier, but for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever would believe in him would not perish but would have everlasting life. It says here in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, that God demonstrates his own love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly. And there is no other name given in heaven or earth by which man can be saved but by the name of Jesus. Amen? The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. There will be a day where every knee, every, even every knee in hell, the devil will bow his knee and confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, but they're just confessing his lordship. He'll never become their Lord. Because it's our opportunity now while we're still alive on this earth and, and receiving the breath of life that God has given us. So please don't leave here today without knowing, without believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen? Amen. I'm going to pray a prayer today, right now. And if you can agree with what I'm saying, if you can believe it from your heart, don't, don't just repeat it because you hear someone next to you repeating it or I'm asking you to pray it. This is between you and God. And you can't fool him. This can't be a religious exercise. This is by faith that you believe. But just bow your head if you would, please. And we're, we'll, we'll pray this with anybody who needs to pray this. Say, God in heaven, I come to you today in the name of Jesus. I believe that today is the day of my salvation. I thank you, Father, for loving me so much that you sent Jesus to die for my sin. I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory. But by my faith, in the power of Jesus' blood, I believe that I can come into your presence just like I've never done anything wrong. So I confess with my mouth because I believe in my heart that Jesus became my perfect sacrifice. He was a man without sin, but he became sin for me that I might become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He died for my sin, but he's been raised from the dead. And I, too, confess my Jesus, my risen Lord, as my master. Thank you, Jesus, for rescuing me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for teaching me. Thank you, Father God, for loving me. And by the name of Jesus, I declare with boldness, that Jesus Christ is my Lord. Amen. Amen. Would there be anyone here today? Say, Pastor, I prayed with you. I, I believe with all my heart, man, and I wasn't too sure before I got here whether or not I was all right with God, but I know now because of the word that I've heard and the confession of my faith that I am a child of God, because of his grace and mercy upon me. If there's anyone here today, you say, that's me, Pastor. Just, just, just keep your head bowed for a second longer, if you would, please. But if that's you, what I've just described, if you'd look up at me and just kind of give me a nod and say, yes, I, I prayed with you, Pastor. That's me. Is there anyone here today? Anyone here today? No, no. The lights are a little bright, so, so just... Uh, 
get my attention. Is, 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 is. Hallelujah. 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 If you're watching by screen, just look up at the screen. I mean, God knows your heart. God knows your heart. Okay, every, everyone bow. I mean, keep it, keep it down. I'm going to do a little bit differently here. Would there be, if that's you, just, 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 just give me a little wave. Anyone here? No one's looking at you. Just, just give me a wave, okay? Anybody else? Is there anybody else? Thank you. Anybody else? Praise God. Anyone else that's going to join these two that have acknowledged it? Hallelujah. We don't have to get in a hurry. <laughs> Praise God. Well, Father, I thank you for these two young men for giving their life to you or giving their life back to you, Lord. We're grateful for your grace, for your mercy, for your power. Father, we thank you as we celebrate now with heaven because the Bible said if anyone shall call upon the name of the Lord to be saved that all heaven rejoices. So we rejoice. Amen. 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 Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen, sir. I know you do. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. Well, we sure love you so much. We appreciate you. Amen. Looking for a good time with our family and some friends this week. And we'll come back refreshed. We're leaving refreshed, so we may as well go the same way. We'll be more refreshed than we are right now. Best way to live is refreshed. Amen. <laughs>